My name is Maria Gerlando. I'm 25 years old and I live in Windsor, Ontario. When I was 16 or 17 years old, I had to pick a career. I had to pick something I wanted to go to school for because that's what others around me were doing. That's what I was told to do. Um, that's what my sister and brother had done. And so ultimately I felt like, okay, I gotta pick something. And I chose nursing. I had an aunt that was a nurse who I looked up to and I knew that at the end of nursing, at the end of four years, my job would be a nurse. Like it made sense, it was structured, it was clear. And then what I didn't realize, what never really clicked is that you should love what you do. And if you don't, you won't know what you love if you don't try it. So I went into nursing knowing nothing about it. And throughout that time that I was in school, I was confused. I remember seeing other people enjoy it. And I thought that's really weird. Like they're, they obviously are lying because this is not fun. Like this makes no sense. This, I don't know, I just, it was such a disconnect and it was so far away from my purpose in life, but I wasn't aware of that. So it essentially, I wasn't happy in nursing. And so because of that, I started to look for happiness in other places. And unfortunately it wasn't great places. It was places like unhappy relationships, unhappy friendships, um, food was a big thing. And that kind of caused me to not have control in my life because I wasn't in control of my own happiness and I wasn't taking you know, my happiness as the goal in life. I was just kind of doing what I thought was expected of me. I fell into this autopilot mode where like whatever was around me, that's what I became. And I wasn't my own person. One day when I was about to turn 21, it was like a week before my 21st birthday, I saw a picture of myself on vacation and I looked and I remember not knowing it was me. Like it looked like a girl who was unhappy. And I remember thinking like, oh, that's a really bad photo. But then I realized it was me in the photo. Like I didn't even recognize myself and not just physically, but just like I saw it in a totally different way that, oh my God, what is this life that I'm living? This is not who I am. Like I'm a happy person. I know who I am. I love my life, but I wasn't living that way. And so I kind of woke up from this, from this sleep that I was having. And from that day, I started I wasn't sure where I was headed, but I just knew that I wanted more from life. So I started to do a little bit more self-care. And about two months after that, that awakening moment, I saw the opening for a pageant online. And I remember immediately thinking like, what are, what is my family going to think? Oh my gosh, like this is not what I typically do. Those were, that was kind of the self-talk I had in my mind, but a second kind of went by and I thought, no, I'm going to do this. Like, this makes so much sense. Like, this seems so exciting and so fun. And I just remember feeling like this feels like me. This feels like what I should be doing. And it was an outdoor pageant. And I went on stage. I did the things. I did the walks. I answered a question. I ended up placing as the second runner up and I won Miss Congeniality. And I just thought, oh my gosh, like, what are the chances? Me me like I don't I didn't even know who I was a couple of months ago and now like these other people are looking at me and seeing the person who I wasn't seeing myself and from there I was hooked so after competing in my first pageant it was titled Miss Via Italia I ended up winning this second pageant which requires a lot more responsibility and work to be able to live up to kind of the duties of what you'd expect a Miss Tecumseh to do I enjoyed my year I was able to go all across town Again, really just fell in love with the with the whole pageant community even more. And I was able to fundraise about $5,000 for the Sick Kids Foundation through hosting numerous fundraisers. And then towards the end of my reign in the last month, I remember thinking, okay, I'm about to be done, but I'm not done. So I'm like, what's next? And I remember that someone, one of the former um, Miss Canada's from the Miss Canada, Miss Teen Canada pageant based in Montreal had messaged me you know, about six months sooner asking me to compete in the pageant. And at that time I said, you know, I have a title. I'm really focused on this title, maybe next year. And the day that I started looking this pageant up, it was, the registration was like half off and it was about to end the next day. Um, I saw that the pageant was gonna be the day before my 23rd birthday. And I just remember thinking, wow, I've had this realization that I wanna do more you know, the registration is so inexpensive right now. And it's the day before my 23rd birthday, like all signs point to yes. You know, two hours before my 23rd birthday, I was crowned Miss Canada 2018. 
which was just like the most like movie-like moment I could ever imagine. And from there, I got to travel all across Canada to six provinces. I traveled to Las Vegas for a for an international pageant. I placed in the top three. I got a lot more into keynote speaking and hosting workshops. I hosted many of those and was able to connect with a lot of people. So that was really fantastic. And then after Miss Canada, they sent me to the Philippines to compete for Miss Face of Beauty, which is another international pageant where I placed in the top 15. I spent two weeks in the Philippines with many girls, like amazing girls from around the world. Yet again, I got home and I remember thinking, okay, I'm not done. I spent about two hours on the phone with my friend Matea Henderson, who's the current Miss Earth Canada. And again, I was, we talked for two hours about the Miss World Canada pageant, which she competed for. And eventually she was like, girl, get the application. Depending on how um, the pandemic unfolds, I'll be competing for the title of Miss World Canada 2020. And then hopefully Miss World one day, who knows? I think through pageants, I've also kind of figured out what my purpose is in coaching. Like I didn't think four years ago when I started, oh, I want to be a pageant coach or a health coach of any sort. I just thought I wanted to join a pageant. And from there, it's helped me realize what I want to do. At the time I started pageant coaching, I want to say I had three girls all of last year. Now I've coached upwards of 20 or 30 girls this year alone, just by, you know, learning more about the girls, the different pageants, the community, the contestants, and connecting with them, sharing their stories, being able to support them on their journey in any way. And I really just identified that this year, I want to be one of the top people in the industry. I think that the Canadian pageant industry is not so big. I feel like I'm already definitely one of the leaders and one of the people to come to for advice and guidance for Canadian pageant women. But I also want to be one of the number one people in the pageant industry to teach mindset and clarity and purpose to these girls that are competing because I was in a I was in a state that if so, if I had woken up sooner if someone had told me how to live life alive so much sooner I may have joined a pageant sooner I might have been so much farther along in my journey and I want to be the person who helps girls have that click and change their mindset so that they can sooner achieve their potential and their purpose I think first of all knowing where your stresses come from and limiting your exposure to those stresses as best as you can, it allows you to focus on the things that bring you joy and happiness. So for me, even though I might have an, a stressful eight hour shift, when I come home and I see you know, several messages from girls asking me about pageant advice, life advice, I flick off nursing, I flick off work, and I'm energized by that. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm here to help you. Like That is truly where my heart and purpose lies. The reason why I started living life this way is because I was taught that we all have this purpose in life. Let's say this line is your purpose, not that it goes up or anything, but you can either choose to live your life in alignment with this purpose or not in alignment. And the difference is when you're in alignment, you're going to feel happy. You're going to feel a sense of belonging and you're going to feel a sense of fulfillment and purpose. When you're not in alignment, that's when this emotional and mental unclarity is going to come about. That's when you're going to find lapses in your happiness. That's when you're going to see that you maintain below your standards in your relationships, in your self-care and in your life. And you might not know what your purpose is, but every day you owe it to yourself because no one else can fulfill this purpose. Unlike you, like the chance that the chances of even being born are so slim that you are here for a reason. And that kind of purpose and self-worth, is worth finding and it'll always bring you to happiness and it, there'll be bad days there'll be lessons that you have to learn but overall i'm telling you i've lived two lives one where i was not aligned with myself and my purpose and one where i was and i would choose this life all the time good days and bad days